Hey guys, Mike here from Ball and Bowies, and today I'm just going to be doing an, um, an update on the reptile room, and I'm going to also be feeding a few boas, and we don't really got much to update, but we figured we'd do an update anyways, but we'll start right here with Storm, and as you see, she's doing good, and I moved her, uh, seems like she likes her bowl of greens right here, and she likes to hang out under there and sleep right here on this rock. So this is um, her spot right under her, um, you know, her UV heat lamp right there. And then she has her spot right here where she goes at night too. Sometimes she'll sleep up there under this um, LED night blue light. And she also has her water bowl right back there. And then she can kind of go right under there and get to her water bowl. So she's really enjoying her new uh, enclosure. She used to have an enclosure that was right here on the floor. And it wasn't set up like this and then she does have a heat pad that's right in the middle it's right directly in the middle of this enclosure so if she gets really cold she'll you'll see her laying down right there in the middle so and, um, she's really digging it guys and um, actually we're gonna be shutting off it's uh it's getting late so we're gonna be shutting off her um, daytime light now actually we'll leave it on until the end of the video and then we'll shut it off and we'll go over here to Bernie the burn and he's really happy he took down um, a large rat and a medium rat a couple days ago. So he's nice and uh, happy now. He's shed and he got a couple of rats in him. So he's one happy camper. And um, as you see, I have a, a shed rock in there. So that's why I have uh, also, it helps keeping the paper down for because he always messes it up. So it helps to keep it down. And it also helps him a lot when he sheds. He goes back and forth and rubs up against it and rubs up against the uh, fake rock water dish right here. So that really helps him a lot. And then also we gave the um, we gave the Cuban Niter Nose a new light, a new light fixture. So instead of having two lights up there, we have just a dual light fixture. And right now, since the uh, the nighttime bulb blew as I was trying to switch them, so uh, I was in there for a while, it was really old, so it's time for a, a new uh, nighttime bulb. So right now I just got an LED bulb in there and then I have a heat bulb on this side. So that's a heat bulb and this is an LED bulb. So uh, they had two different light spectrums and also some heat, but I'm gonna be getting um, a, uh, a nighttime, uh, you know, purple heat bulb again. And it's gonna be going in um, a small little fixture I might put up there in the back. Uh, you can buy them at the, at the store. They're really, really small. They're, you know, they're really tiny light fixtures, but I'm gonna be getting one of those and it's gonna be going up in this back corner over there and that's gonna be for nighttime that will go on so it'll keep them warm in there at night. So, um, you know, it's doing really well. They seem to like it earlier. They were both hanging out way up here at the top. As you see, one of them is still, there he is, he's hanging out right there. And the other one is down in there somewhere right behind those uh, leaves. So we will move over here. And this is the small green anole. And there he is right there on the top and he's looking really good and he's eating small male worms and small crickets and then down here we have the um, pair of golden geckos and I've been trying to get these two to breed but um, I'm thinking I have two females I had bought in one and I was sold it as a um, uh, as a female, but I'm starting to think the one I had that I thought was a male was a female or maybe the um, the one I sold is a male and I have two males, so I'm not really good at sexing them and I can barely catch them. They're really fast. As soon as you open up the enclosure, they just want to go off and run. So um, I'm going to have to probably look into that a little further. And um, so if we do have two females, I'll get a male and if we have two ma uh if we have two males what I'll do is I'll have to get two females and separate them because I will not want to put one female in this enclosure and have the two males if there if there is two males fight over her so hopefully we have two females where I can just um, buy one male and uh, he can do his thing with both of them that would be truly awesome so hopefully uh, we'll get good things from that so in the rack down here we have it all ready for the babies as you see guys, he, oh, this is just the boa right here. This is the only snake we have left in this rack and this is a small male Central American. And he's gonna be going up into this bin right here. I just gotta get a heat pad for him for that bin. So as soon as we do that, he'll be moving out of here and getting upgraded to a bigger bin. And as you see guys, we, um, 
we have just you know paper towels in them and we're just getting them ready for babies that 47 days one female is due uh, in 47 days this female right here and as you see she's really 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 swollen right here and it doesn't even really transfer onto the camera how swollen she is I mean she just looks huge and uncomfortable so she is due in 47 days give or take a day and the female that's down here and we usually we have our light on today we usually don't have our light on this is the Nicaraguan's enclosure the Nicaraguan female and you can see a little bit of her right there and that's just the bottom up part of her tail but she's also gravid and she's due in 48 days they had their POS a day apart guys one on March 8th, one on March 9th. And then in here we have the female hypo who's um, sitting under the heating pad, telling the hypo. And then we have the male Nicaraguan who just took down a rat two days ago and he's just sitting in the water bowl right there. And I'm trying to get this them to last minute breed. They were locking up um, a couple weeks ago so I just uh, put them back together yesterday and because I just fed the Nicaraguan uh, a couple days ago. so. And also I fed Helen as uh, you know, a little medium rat just to give them both something. So I'm gonna see if they'll walk up again a few more times. I'm gonna stop breeding uh, these two. This is the last pair I have together, but I'm gonna stop fully on May 10th. Tomorrow's May 1st, so I'm gonna give them 10 more days together. And if I do see a lot of um, courting going on in the next 10 days, maybe I'll leave it till May 15th. But definitely by May 15th, if I don't see an ovulation, I'm gonna be completely done because we do have two confirmed gravid females. As I said, the Nicaraguan female bred to the Nicaraguan male. And um, Empress down here, who is a BCI Colombian. And um, I was told she's a uh, het type one annery. And like I said, where I haven't proved her out myself, this will be my first year proving her out. I tried to breed her last year, but she reabsorbed her follicles, it seemed. So, um, this year she was bred to the male Nicaraguan and she was also bred to the albino cow male. So we won't be proving her out for anything annery this year, but um, it's just gonna be cool to see some babies. And as I said, she's really, really big guys. I mean, she's truly swollen. And she is taking uh, food. She has taken, I'm only giving her small rats. As you know guys, a snake this size is eating large or jumbos. I give her a large every 14 days. And uh, that usually, you know, so she gets two lodges a month, so that suffices her. And they're probably on the verge of being a small type of a jumbo, because they are pretty big lodges. But I've been have I've been giving her smalls or a small medium, and I've been giving her offering it to her every two weeks, like I normally do. And she took a small rat from me uh, yesterday, and then she took a small rat the day before. When I say small rat, they were small rats. They weren't mediums. They were smalls. So I gave her one, waited a day, and I offered her another, and she take and she took it, and um, she's due in 47 days, give or take a day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed her again in about 16, 17 days. I'll offer her food, and if she does take another small rat, I only offer her one. I will give her that, and then after that, I will not offer her a male the last 30 days of her being gravid. I just don't wanna risk anything or bother her in any way she'll be fine she was uh, really beefed up before the breeding season and like i said she has been taking a few small meals while she's been gravid so um, she really has maintained a good size and she looks great so that's really really awesome guys and then in this enclosure we have the albino um leopard gecko right here and i'm waiting for her to drop an egg it looks like she has one egg in her this time doesn't look like she has two uh, but it does look like she has one good egg and we'll check for an egg right now guys as you see we have Christopher the rescued cat I'm watching and he's loves to sit right back here and he sits and looks at this leopard gecko all day long guys he just loves it so we will check for an egg but I don't think I usually see some dirt kicked out guys and I can tell you right now I don't think we'll have an egg guys I just don't think so Nope, I don't think she laid it yet, guys. And I've been waiting for about a week now. Nope, no egg, guys. 
but she still looks pretty blown out right here on this side and let me pick her up and try to get her oh she's squirming i don't really want to mess with her all right so we'll wait a few more days and um maybe i'm wrong because like i said i am new but i was right the first time she uh, had a couple eggs i seen them in there where she's an albino i was able to flip them o her over and see them so uh i do think she does uh have one egg in her so hopefully she'll be dropping that egg soon and um if not i'll pair her back up if i am wrong and we'll get her going again guys but this is where i put the females right here i give them a little spot where they could dig outside here and as you see right in the middle the dirt's a little darker right here because it's moist as you see it's drying out a little bit so i'll be spraying that down and uh, moisten it up but this is where i'll put the, the females right here into a 10 gallon with a enclosed lay box with a little outdoor lay box a little bit of water some food and um and a little led light right here this is not a heat lamp this is just a small led light and uh they get that because they've leopards are nocturnal so they start doing a, she's out right now but she usually hides in the box during the day but this light will be going off soon actually i could probably shut it off now for the night so it is getting late and hopefully guys we'll have an egg in there maybe two but i think if she only has one i can see it on one side of her it's a big big white spot big oblong white shape so hopefully that is a nice good viable egg in there guys that'd be awesome and we'll do a little check-in with um with some of the um, my whole backs my three whole backs there's the leucistic and it's time for a clean in as you see we got a lot of poop in that corner and there's the little baby tempered albino and it's nice fat stomach guys they've been eating good and there's the nice bold check out that bold guys so we got a leucistic right here we got a tempered albino and we got a bold and these are my three whole backs guys and, and I mean, when, when I say they're beautiful, guys, they're really, really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. All right, and as you see, they're feeding on small crickets and small mealworms, guys. And I'll be doing a cleaning on these tomorrow. As you see, we just cleaned Bernie today. We just cleaned the albino today, nice and clean. We just cleaned um, Storm here today, nice and clean. And we just cleaned this enclosure today, nice and clean. And we also cleaned this one right here. That one's nice and clean, so we do a little bit of cleaning today. We still got this one right here, and I really won't touch this gravid female too much. I might, like, if she's laying on this end, I might move the water and fill it tomorrow and kind of clean that end. And when she's down here, I might kind of clean that end a little bit, but I don't move her. I just let her be, so... You know, once she's done and the babies come, this whole enclosure will get a really good, uh, solid cleaning. So tomorrow we're going to be, uh, now that the, the one that slugged out in March, the possible super hypo, now that she just ate a small rat and a medium rat, she had a small rat yesterday and a medium three days ago. So now that she's happy in the hide, I'll probably take her out tomorrow, put her in a holding bin and clean her enclosure. So, and then all the snakes right here are sitting happy. I upgraded the ball python to a bigger bin. And there it is right there. And it was in one of these small 28 quarts. Now it's in a 34 or 36 quart. So it's just a little bit bigger. It has a little bit more room for it. And um, I'm gonna be, like I said, building that rack. I've been slacking. And, but I did just get the wood to build a new gecko rack, guys. I got the, I just got the wood, um, the material to build a small rack using these six quart um, bins. And I'm going to be doing a eight bin rack using uh, these six quart. And these are only 94 cents a piece. And they're six quart, 13 and 13 five eighths long, eight one fourth wide, four seven eighths high. And we're going to be doing eight straight up just like this. Uh, rack right here this is a six and these are eight quarts but we're going to be doing something like this it's just going to be eight high using these and we're going to be using that as a gecko rack guys so that's going to be we'll have the six bin baby rack we'll have the six bin adult rack and then we're going to have a eight bin adult racks you know slash sub adult rack you know because we are getting into geckos a lot heavier here guys and i do have a couple rats over here that we're going to feed right now and uh, let's actually grab one out. Let me grab a towel. And we will feed a boa, guys. Nope. And as you see, we just did a cleaning on the rats today. We just cleaned them. 
you just clean these ones. We just clean this gravid female right here. And we just clean this mother with, uh, she has seven babies in there that'll probably be good to go in about seven to 10 days on their own. And uh, we have a four females and a big male in there breeding. All right, guys, so the first one we're gonna offer food to right now is this one right here. I did take a medium rat about a week ago, so it's a finicky eater sometimes. I do not know if it's gonna wanna eat right now where it did just eat about a week ago, but we will try because it usually eats two rats and it did the rat it ate wasn't too big. So hold on, I'm gonna get the tongs, guys. I'm definitely gonna need the tongs for this. Where did I put those tongs? Up oh, they're right here in front of me, guys. Hold on. All right. think that she wants it guys all right so what we'll do is we'll come back to her guys so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to feed um, who are we gonna give it to guys oh hold on bear with me we're gonna put it back in the water for a second and we are actually going to give it to the gravid not the gravid sorry the um, the female that had slugged out the super because she's always ready to eat something else and she's still looking pretty thin for when she slugged out in mid-march so she did just get a couple of small rats in the last week but we'll offer her one more small rat because these are kind of really small so i'm trying to get rid of these last couple of real small ones that i have and we will get rid of one right now, guys. Oops, sorry about that, guys. I'm trying to find someone to help me with this camera work, but a lot of people, my friends, are scared of the reptiles. Here we go, guys. Well, doesn't look like this one wants it either, guys. All right, we're having an off feeding day here. I did just do a feeding, so I guess all the boas are content, guys. Well, that's pretty good when they're content. That means that I'm doing the right thing. So we will lock her back up, and we will move on to the next one, guys. So the next one that I'm going to try to feed is going to be one in this rack, so bear with me. I'm gonna put down the phone and get the bin down. All right, guys, so we're back. Sorry about that. This one we're gonna to try to feed is the male hypo. And the female just did have a nice, um, as you see, she's nice and fat. Get out of there. She did just have a nice uh, rat, a live one. And he's got it, guys. And I'm trying to get these guys beefed up. They've been growing so slowly that I'm just trying to get them beefed up. I mean, I don't know what it's gonna take. So I'm just upping them from um, adult mice to small rats now. And on a more often, I'm giving them, instead of an adult mouse weekly, I'm giving them a small rat like that weekly. So this one's been on small rats for a few weeks now. And the female, Motley, right here, just got her first small rat a couple days ago. And as you see, she's nice and blown out right here. And it uh, looks like she would actually take another one right now, but she's just too small and too blown out to try to offer her another one. So uh, we're going to let her be. All right, guys. So... 
let's um the next one we're going to try to feed right now is the this is just a regular het al het albino t minus and it's a regular Colombian male head albino t minus so let's get him a rat and he is always willing to eat and i'm trying to beef him up for this season this upcoming season and he will be ready by then probably he is a good size now and he's got it guys all right as i as i said he's always ready to eat all right guys all right so the last one that we are going to feed is probably going to be the ball python on the bottom right here so let let me put the phone down for a second and get these two bins off so hold on guys All right, guys, and that bow you've seen right there was sitting half in and out of his water right there. He just ate a nice big medium rat the other day, and he'll go in there and poop right in his water, which I hate. I got about three boas out of the collection that love to shit in their water, and it really sucks because I'll clean it, and as soon as I feed him, they'll go in there and poop like this one. He'll be out of there in a day or two, and I'll have a nice, nasty crap in there. So, but, all right, guys and all right so there's the ball python and as you see he's just starting to come back around i mean he was burnt to shreds guys when i got him he was ripped open he was scarred he was pussing um you know and as you see now he's, he's a little scarred up but he's hailed and he's gaining his weight back and that's all that matters and he's very active tongue flicking good so we saved his life guys and uh the vet recommended that i put him down when i brought him in and I refused to so we got some antibiotics and I was treating him also with some like neosporin ointment on his burns and with the antibiotics and the neosporin and it brought him back he didn't eat for months but once he started eating boy is he back as you see right now he's uh, wanting to eat so and that's just there he is guys all right so as I said he's doing really really well and uh, he does have some nasty scars on him and some really hard calcium deposit bumps. I was told that's what they could be by the vet. But um, as you see, guys, he's doing really well. So I'll give it a few more months and he'll probably have most of 90, or if not all of his 90% and not all of his weight back on. And right now he does not have a heating pad on him. As you see, he's plenty warmth. There's plenty of humidity in there. But um, I did not want to keep a heating pad on him because he does not go near it. He's like scared of him, and uh, I did not want it to hurt his uh, his basically his wounds while he was uh, while he was healing up. So he gets basically the warmth from all the other uh, heating pads. He does have top heat actually because the heating pad does go right here for the enclosure above him. So that kind of warms his enclosure up. And um, we'll actually see what it is in his enclosure right now with this heat gun. I've opened it up a few times. But... So it's 82 in his enclosure. And I've opened it up a few times. So it probably maintains around 84, 85 in there. Maybe uh, probably about 83, 84, which is perfect. As you see, he's eating well. And I usually don't keep ball pythons, but I had to rescue this guy and save him. And he's doing great, guys. So we're going to leave him alone to let him eat. All right, I'm hitting there watching the Bruins, and they're losing, one, they're losing by one right now in the third, in the second round of the NHL playoffs. But they are up one nothing in this series. So that's why the TV you can hear it. I usually uh, have the TV muted, but we gotta watch the game, guys. But all right, well we'll take a look at the um, we're gonna take a look at the the male, the male uh, leopards first. Before we do that, we'll feed the turtles. And I got some turtle pellets right here. And we're gonna just drop some in. All right, guys. So, so they'll eat those. 
and as you see this is two small red-eared sliders and I do have um, two bigger adult um, Eastern Painted Turtles in the other room so we'll do a check-in and these two are mating right here and there's the female Chloe on top I thought she was gravid with a few eggs but I think I'm wrong I just think she's well fed and she's nice and thick so we got put her in here with the big male that's her boyfriend right there and then we got this male right here he's kind of one of the new additions so we're gonna have to do a cleaning because they seem to all have some poopy and then we got the um, patternless hypo tangerine also a male this is basically the male rack and then we got the um, patternless albino and this is just a patternless tempered albino so and it's also a male so male 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 this is all a male those are my four breeder males and as you see right now we only have two adult size breeder females we have that normal and we have the albino but out of the three holdbacks in here we um, I sexed them to the best that I could and this bold is looking like a female and the leucistic is looking like a male and this little tempered albino is looking like a female so if that's the case that's going to be awesome but if I'm wrong that is all right but this one's a little bit bigger and I was able to get an accurate uh, read on this one and this is the um, hypo bell albino and this is a female guy so in, a, in a probably about four to six more months this girl will hopefully be big enough to breed and I'll be pairing her to the um, I'm not sure yet maybe the hypo paddleless tangerine or maybe one of the up-and-comer males but uh, so that's gonna give us definitely three females and then oh we just lost the cricket and then the one I bred right here and I incubated her for a female incubated her between 79 and 82 and there she is she's uh, is a female there's no hemi pins coming in at all so that will give us um, four females and this is also a female right here if we decide to keep her and there she is no hemi pins coming in on this one either she's still kind of small but she is looking like a female and this one's um, this one's definitely a male because you can see the hemi pins already starting to drop on this guy and there he is and this one is a male and this is a little bigger and you can you can blatantly see the hemi pins on this guy so he's a male and this is the medical one that has its uh, tail dropped and a big cut on it big gash from getting bitten it was in a cage with a big dominant male with a female and it just basically got torn to shreds by the bigger male and this is a male right here and I'll be keeping him letting him heal up and I'll be holding him back and I'll be using him as a breeder in the future the very far future so like I said guys when I'm the only ones that are for sale right now are this female right here and this male right here and the rest are going to be held back for me so as soon as uh, all these basically grow up I'll probably be at around seven or eight males and about five or six females so that's going to be great next uh next year's gecko season is going to be really really awesome and exciting we're going to have a lot to pair up this year we really didn't have much but uh, we did we did get one successful egg to hatch out of four wow one was um two were infertile one got mold and that one hatched and then we do have like i said two females now which i'm hoping the albino which is the mother of um, this one right here the one we hatched I'm hoping she has one good egg in her now, which would be awesome. And I'm hoping that we can get a few more eggs from her or the other normal girl that we have in with the uh, big normal male uh, for the season's out. That would be awesome too. But if not, we do have baby bows on the way, guys. Like I said, this girl right here is huge. She is just massive, guys. Massive. That's all babies from right where her head is sitting all the way down. So I'm hoping she has about 18 to 22 in that range of live babies, guys. So she's looking really good, and she still has 47 days. But, all right, guys, well, I just wanted to give you an update. I wanted it to be a quick update, but it turned into a uh, quick half-hour update. But uh, this is Mike from Ball & Boas saying until the next time, peace.